Hi everyone, welcome to the See More Than Sports podcast. My name is Chanel and I'm going to be your host for this series. Um, my plan is to interview people of all different backgrounds, writers, reporters, athletes, um, allies, everybody in between. I can't wait to show you guys some of the amazing content I have coming up. I already have a full calendar of people that I'm interviewing in the next couple of weeks, so that is super, super amazing and exciting. This first episode is just going to be me answering some questions that I've gathered from past uh, questionnaire videos here on YouTube and just ones I came up with myself. Um, you'll kind of see a pattern about how I answer these questions, so I hope you guys enjoy, and let's get started. The first question is, are you in school, and what for, if you are? So, I'm currently a rising senior at UMass Amherst. I guess I am just a senior now. <laughs> um, I have to remind myself of that sometimes because it's been a crazy fast four years and I literally can't believe this is the last year. And I am a communication major and an education minor. What's my favorite color is the second question. Um, If you can't tell by the channel art and everything like that, it is pink. And um, sometimes it's a little embarrassing to admit, but it is, so I don't really care. Uh, The third question is, if I could travel anywhere right now, where would I go? I would have to say Bermuda because the last time I was there, I didn't get to enjoy all of it. I was a little bit um, under the weather. So I would love to go back there, hopefully maybe like a graduation trip. I don't know. I need to get back there. I need to go in the water and just hopefully get a nice tan. The fourth question is, if you could meet a famous person, um, dead or alive, who would it be? So, I don't really know. There's a couple of people that I'd really like to meet. I think a stereotypical answer for me would be, like, Oprah. You know, (laughs) like, she's just done such amazing things, and to know somebody of that stature would be crazy. I think the other person I would love to meet is Shonda Rhimes, the creator of all my favorite shows. I pretty much stand anything she's ever made. But that being said, I got some things I want to talk to her about. Um, about casting and uh, story arcs of some of my favorite people that did not get the story they deserve. But anyways, let's move on to the next question. My favorite genre of music is question number five. Um, I like all types of music. It's kind of weird. Um, I grew up listening to a classic rock station on the way to school and I hated it. But... There were some songs in there that I was like, oh, like this isn't bad. But I also love pop music. I also love R&B music. I love rap music. I love all kinds of music. Just not like bluegrass, back road country music. <laughs> I can get down with like pop country. Like I love um, Kelsey Ballerini. And just like the Carrie Underwoods of pop country right now are people I'm pretty down with. Question number six, seven, oh my gosh, six. Question number six is, what is my favorite movie? My favorite movie, I have a couple favorite movies. Sometimes I forget some of the movies that I really love, but I like Disney movies. Like I like Moana, Princess and the Frog is probably the best Disney movie. Probably tied with Moana, actually, but Moana is just beautiful, like, picture, like, animation-wise. Anyways. Um, and I really love, like, Remember the Titans and Friday Night Lights and sports movies. Goon is ridiculous, of course. And um, all the stereotypical sports movies are all pretty good. The next question is number eight. What was my dream job growing up? My dream job growing up was to be a fashion designer. And some parts of me thinks that I should have continued on that because I grew up wearing a lot of clothes that didn't necessarily align with my age range, if that makes sense. Like a crop top would have been nice in my size back then, like when I was in high school even. Um, I say that like it was like a zillion years ago, but it really wasn't. So yeah, a fashion designer and who knows what's going to happen because I think 
clothes are kind of inaccessible. They're getting better, but only because companies are starting to run really small, which is a blessing. The next question, number nine, is do I have any hobbies? Yes, I do. I don't know if I call them hobbies or just self-care initiatives. Um, I do my own nails every week. You'll see a new manicure unless I'm doing batch recordings. Um, and I'm trying not to talk with my hands as much because it looks a little crazy on video. <laughs> so, yeah, I do my own nails and I do my own makeup. If I'm not blending, please let me know. That's a nightmare for me, but let's move on to the next question. Question number 10 is, what would you tell your 15-year-old self? So, when I was 15, I was a sophomore in high school. I think I would just tell myself, like, get started a little sooner. Um, I was, like, really nervous about doing things that, like, that weren't even a big deal. Sophomore year, the end of the year, literally the last month of the year, I made the decision. Well, it wasn't really my decision. I was voluntold, as my family likes to say. I was voluntold to um, work for my high school's football team and or their program and that literally happened the last month I was a sophomore like my teacher made me go talk to my other teacher who happened to be one of the football coaches and asked if we could do an arrangement of having some sort of job for me because I already knew a majority of the athletes on in the program and it just kind of made sense because I am obviously into sports I know what's going on I know ways that I can help make the program better and to publicize a little more so I would just be doing like flyers and filming and editing videos and doing like player inventory and information like stuff like that and that was something I could have gotten started with a lot sooner I feel like at least maybe that year like I don't think I had to wait till the end of the year to do it but um all in good time but I would tell myself just to know like not not be scared or as intimidated to do it, to just do it, because it was going to happen regardless. So I should just let it go. The next question is, if you could play alongside any athlete, active or not, who would it be? Now my, question, my answer to this is going to be a little bit um, biased, because I just watched the Willie documentary on Peacock TV. It's on the free tier, so you definitely need check it out. I literally cried during the whole thing. And let me tell you, I don't cry um, happy tears, really. I only really cry when I'm angry, unfortunately. But I was so overwhelmed with that documentary from the beginning. Um, it was so well done and just you could feel the emotions in it and it was just amazing. So I would say Willie O'Ree would be the person that I would love to play alongside. Um, he's just such a strong soul and I see so much of his his spirit in myself. Um, you have to watch it to understand that. But he has just gone through so much and yet remains more focused on the good things that has happened to him rather than the unfortunate events that, you know, even though there were a lot of them, like he, you literally wouldn't know just by the way he carries himself. So documentary, it is worth every freaking second. Um, I could not recommend it more. The next question, number 12, is who is my favorite athlete? Now, <laughs> once again, I feel like a little bit biased. I think I'm just gonna go off and say like, pretty much every Boston Bruin currently, mostly my top two, would be Charlie Coyle of Weymouth, Mass, and Patrice Bergeron, Canada's son. <laughs> yeah, I love the two of those guys so much, but of course I got to shout out, you know, my ladies in the group. Um, I'm a huge Kendall Coleman, Schofield fan. I'm a huge fan of every female athlete who has made it their mission to just be an athlete, you know, not to care what department they play for or you know whatever they're just an athlete so Kendall you're amazing um Hillary Knight is amazing I grew up loving her too uh, question number 
13 is, who is a celebrity or influencer that you look up to? Now, I wrote this question not because I'm going to say a celebrity, um, because I'm not. <laughs> but my favorite influencers are a couple by the name of Shane and Hannah. They are Squirmy and Grubs here on YouTube. I would definitely be linking their channel below. You probably know them better than you know me. Um, they are an interabled couple, something I'd never, um, not heard of because, duh, that's gonna happen to me one day, but, like, just something I've never seen before in this capacity. They share their lives, you know, to the extent that they are comfortable with, and although, once again, they get a lot of crazy freaking comments, like, I'm sure I'm going to as well, they are just really amazing people sharing their story for people who don't see it and in, in depict it in normal life. Um, I've said on a couple things, like, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And that can be good or bad, but in this case, it's good. I look up to them so much because they continue to put their lives out there when there's so much um, speculation sometimes around their relationship and I just obviously I am normal and can see that they are a real couple but to have to combat that almost every day I can imagine is super exhausting so not only do are they like a, a positive influence me or people that I admire I'd love to have a conversation with them as well and I'm working on that so we'll see if that happens Question number 14 is, how have I been staying busy during quarantine? So, I left school um, for spring break and literally down to the wire, we get an email that's like, plan to not come back immediately. Um, and I was like, okay. So, then we kind of just packed all my stuff, especially mostly my clothes and things like that. And um, I was still in school. So, at the beginning of quarantine, I was still in the middle of my semester. I finished a lot better than I thought I would, but I think that's a little bit owed to the transition. Uh, schoolwork I've been doing, then when school stopped, I honestly just basked in being able to do nothing. And that sounds crazy, but I it's true. Um, I was a little bit stressed out before coming home. I didn't realize it really till school was over and I could finally breathe a little bit but yeah it was um interesting and like I said I do my nails every week uh I love makeup so you know and also I love YouTube so I've been watching YouTube videos probably a little bit too much more <laughs> since I've been home question number 15 is what is my favorite Boston sports memory. So as soon as I just said that out loud, I immediately thought of um, baseball for some reason. I don't know why because I'm not really, you know, whatever. But the image that popped into my mind literally just now was Joe Kelly initiating a fight on the baseball team. Um, and during a game on the baseball team, I'm so stupid. Um, during the game and him just saying, basically, you want to go? And then, like, the freaking bench brawl breaks out. I don't condone fighting, okay? But you have to understand as a sports fan, any kind of moment like that is amazing. A line cl clearing brawl is amazing to see, as long as everybody ends up okay. I don't think I've seen anything crazy happen after one of those, but it's always interesting to see. And, yeah, Joe Kelly Fight Club. Missed that guy. But, of course, the 2011 Stanley Cup. And, basically, the 2013 run was amazing as well. Like, I was so invested in that season. And that's when my interest in hockey, like, really picked up. Like, I had been in for a while. But, that season in particular was a gift and a curse, obviously. Because we didn't win. But, anyways. Question number 16 is, do I have a favorite podcast? And the answer to that is yes. Um, I have a couple, actually. I'm going to go with the non-sports ones first, because um, I had a couple regular ones, too. So I really like um, a show called Ear Biscuits. It's with Rhett and Link. 
that's how you know <laughs> that I've been on YouTube for a little bit. I like the Jenna and Julian podcast. Um, their old episodes are really funny. I like um, the Bales <laughs> podcast. That's with Geo and Bart. Um, yeah, they're cool. Look it up. It's funny. Um, and also really real. They talk, like, kind of unfiltered. Um, so that's nice. That's always fun. I love Chicks in the Office. I love Marina's Morning Skate. We're getting into the sports ones now. I love 31 Thoughts. That's an awesome podcast. Um, I love the Steve Dangle podcast, which sounds illegal as a Bruins fan. But as long as we keep beating them, I can be a fan. Uh, yeah, the Steve Jangle podcast is a Leafs, Toronto Maple Leafs based podcast, that's why I said that, but if you don't know who they are, you need to, just, it's mandatory, it's homework for you now. Um, what else, who else? I, I really love so many podcasts, I listen to podcasts all the time, and, uh, the Jenna Julian one was definitely my first, um, initiation into the podcast world, and I really love listening to people have a conversation, so, I guess this one was a long time coming, too. Number 18 is, um, who do, what do I hope to achieve with this podcast? Like I said, I'm an education minor and a communication major, and I would love to utilize those in ways to help, um, Educate people about disabilities and inclusion, but also within the realm of sports and media in general. Um, so I just hope to have conversations that people can walk away from feeling really good and inspired, if that's what they want to feel. Um, not really like a inspirational hit piece type of walk away, but like, uh, wow, like I learned something new and I should apply this to my life kind of walk away. And hopefully get to grow my audience a little bit more because I think, like I said in the previous interview, um, you know, people just aren't looking for voices like mine currently. So if I can push mine out there and amplify others around me, then that's awesome. That's the goal. Um, question number 19 is who inspires me? So many people inspire me, but... You know, aside from the general answers, I would have to say teachers in general. Um, everybody knows they get underpaid, and if you didn't feel like that before, if you're a parent in quarantine now, I bet you feel that way. Um, and I just have a lot of respect for teachers. My mom is an educator. Um, I grew up in that world before I was a student and then when I was a student I was even more part of that and I've also had experience here and there doing the same as well and it is such a rewarding feeling so I think in some ways that's what I want to do is be able to teach people even if it's not a classroom and honestly it's probably better for me anyways because I'm too nervous for that taking care of the thousand kids like no 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 thanks um yeah so teachers inspire me anybody who's doing what they love um and, and able to make money off of it those people inspire me if you're passionate about your job and you still love it and you still find that you um don't hate going to work every day even if that's working from home right now I really I admire that so much because that's what I want to do. That's ultimately what I want to do. I want to be able to do something that I wake up and love it every day. And that was further in, um, confirmed for me last night when I watched the Willie documentary because he was well into his 60s when he started doing coaching things. And he loved it. And you could tell that he really loved it every day, um, waking up to a new adventure. And I would love nothing more than that as well. Not really coaching, but, you know, the waking up to do what I love type of thing. Um, yeah. The final question is, who are my dream guests? So, like I said, I would love to have Squirmy and Grubs or Hannah and Shane on this podcast. I think that we could have a really awesome conversation, and I would love advice from them just as people who 
dated once. I mean, they're, they're engaged now, so, like, they did date before. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, have a conversation about that because um, as much as I can ask my girlfriends and my guy friends for advice on that, they, they're not going to be able to give me substantial help. <laughs> um, this is, I'm in a different time, time and space as a disabled woman in the dating world, and, um, yeah, and it also doesn't help that, like, my brother and sister-in-law met when they were, like, 12 years old and have been together ever since. Like, it's one of those. It's either, like, I'm talking to somebody who's been together with their person for longer than I've been alive, or, um, I'm talking to people who are just, you know, in hookup culture or met on the app. Like, I need more substantial advice, okay? I do. If you have it, please leave it below. I'm not even really open to it right now either, but in the future, I will look back on these comments. Um, my dream guests range from um, athletes, like the um, literally any patriot ever, please. Um, I really miss having Chandler Jones on our team. I would love to talk to former teammates. I would love to talk to Bruins players. Um, I think I would be too a little too shy for that, so almost a little hoping that doesn't happen. And women, obviously. My problem is, is like when I say athlete, I'm including women in that statement. I don't feel like I need to say like a female athlete. They're an athlete. Athlete, as far as I'm aware, of, it doesn't um, isn't into, like, a, a gender separation. We are the ones who put the female before when we do female athletes, so. I'm going to close this episode with explaining how this whole situation, me having this podcast, happened. I wrote an article about five weeks ago, yesterday, and for all intents and purposes, it kind of went viral, but that was not without me sending DMs to so many people. And one of the people that did not get a DM asking me to, asking them to share my article from me, a sports reporter from Fox Sports, um, Laura Oakman, she saw my article. Her network, Galvanized, saw my article. They retweeted it. She shared it on her Twitter as well. And um, one day, Galvanized just came into my DMs, and I wasn't sure who ran the account at the time but I was pretty sure it was Laura and we just had a conversation and it changed my life um I don't say something like that lightly at all um Laura literally talked to me for an hour and change and she just said so many things that I was like speechless to like there were a lot of moments where she like say, like, a monologue's worth of, of, of amazingness to me, and I would just be, like, like, dead silent. Dead air. It was dead air. She just has all these hopes and dreams for me, and I don't know if I did, um, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know if that was me, like, if I have the same amount of hopes and dreams that she has for me as I have for myself, which kind of sounds sad, um, but I feel like I might have needed that, um, to, to have an excuse to start something like this, and that's pretty much how I feel about it, like, I want to do this podcast not on camera, because I wanted to be able to sit in my pajamas and just do it and feel relaxed, and for the most part, I still am, but, you know, my main point to her was, like, I never grew up seeing myself reflected in sports media in the sense of, like, I turn on the NFL Network, and it's just guys in the studio talking about football. And looking back, only recently, like only in the last couple months have I been able to look back and be like, huh, like that's something I could do. Like, I don't necessarily want to do that, but I could sit in the studio and wear a suit. <laughs> I could sit in the studio, wear a suit, and talk about football. I'm more hockey, I'm a hockey girl. But, um, yeah, so... I ended up coming to this conclusion that this was going to be a project for me. And, you know, I came up with the title, um, See More Than Sports, because I knew that I was going to have more than just 
sports people on here. Now, you're not going to see that come in for a while um, within the next couple interviews, but in the next three or four, you will see some differences um, in the people that I interview. And I'm really excited about that because, like I'm going to say to some of my guests, you know, even if you're an athlete, that's not... That might be a huge part of who you are, but that's not you forever. Um, and I won't phrase it like that in a sad way, but like, that's not who you are at the end of the day. You're a person. So, with that being said, um, I am so honored to be a part of the Galvanized Network. It is filled with amazing women, mostly reporters and um sports media based so I feel really especially fortunate to be here and having the support of somebody like Laura and literally so many amazing women um who came before me and I forget how young I am sometimes because I feel like I'm in my mid-30s um you just kind of feel like that uh I think when you're in a position like I am I literally feel like I should have at least two kids by now and I'm only 21. Um, but this is my baby now. So if you have any requests for people that you'd love to see on the podcast, please leave them down below. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of just getting to know me. Some silly questions. Some amazing questions, hopefully. And um, yeah, I'm really happy and excited to go along this journey with you. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and I will talk to you guys in my next episode. The first guest ever, I recorded a video yesterday with her. Her name is Lauren Campbell. She's We talked about all sorts of stuff, from sports to how she got to where she is today. And I love asking questions like that because um, I want to know. I would love to know, you know the background of these amazing content creators that I follow so deeply and love so much. And that's my plan, to get to know these people and to have you guys get to know them as well. So that's the next episode coming up. Thank you so much for listening and watching, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Before you leave, make sure you subscribe to the channel and subscribe on Spotify. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next week.